Lord said, stand up, Paul, and bow your tears. You must preach my gospel for many long years. Go down to Damascus, the street is called straight. You'll meet and Thank 
So don't go tell the world, Paul. I'm counting on you. So go tell the world, Paul. I'm counting on you. sunshine and the flowers, Lord, everything that's coming out. Yes, Thank you for the valleys, Lord, just as much as the mountains, Lord. <laughs> just use this service. Somebody that's lost and doesn't know you, Lord, Father, they may come forward and give their heart to you, Lord, to bless everyone as we go through this service today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 146 in your book. Okay. Bless you, Lord. Like a bird in prison, I dwell. No free from my sorrow, I fell. But Jesus came and I think I found the answer to that. Uh, 
uh, this week. I don't know if there's any truth to that or not. Uh, I read something. I don't know if there's any truth to, to it or not. Somebody done a study said the man that kissed his wife by every morning before he went to work was uh, most 99% of the time was in a good mood and a good employee. And I also read one one time, they asked a man how come he didn't work. He said, because he didn't want to kiss his wife goodbye. <laughs> But anyways, I'll tell you what, this thing is good. This thing is worth uh, being happy about every day. I'm not saying we won't have battles and we won't have valleys. And I'm not saying that I'm on the mountaintop all the time. But I'm telling you what, I want to go to heaven every day of the week. And I love Jesus every day of the week. And I'll tell you what, I feel like traveling on, don't you? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, more than ever, I feel like traveling on. I'm going to do as much effort as I can and what I keep my little buddy over there on the piano will take over. And... Uh, so I want you to sing it this morning like uh, you mean it. If you don't mean it, sing it like you don't mean it. So uh, if you feel like traveling on and you're happy in your soul this morning, the person beside you will know it. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Lord be good to me.
not deserving him. When I came to him, when I came to him, I, I just, he got my name.
today. We just don't realize how special we are. God loves us beyond measure.
Man, I like the presence of the Lord, don't you? I had a brother that went on to be with the Lord. He told me one time, he said, my kid said every time I get a hug from him, he said, I know to reach for my wallet. He said, that's the only time I get a hug from him. He said, when they start hugging for me, I know to reach for my wallet. I don't want the Lord to feel like that for me. Do you? Sing, sing that, Zach. I, I, man, I just, I just enjoy. Listen, yesterday morning, I was visiting with my mother, and by the way, she's doing great. Going, get ready to go back to her place Tuesday, Lord's will. There's a lady 54 years old in her room. And I don't know, last week or sometime, had a pain, a sharp pain, and all of a sudden, uh, she was paralyzed. And it paralyzed all over. And come to find out it was a blood clot. We just don't know. And, and uh, 54 years old. And uh, so we was praying with this lady, and and, uh, and y'all heard me say it. You can open up the Word of God, and, and Jesus referred to us as His children. But a few times in the New Testament, He referred to us as little children. All of us likes to be baby from time to time. I feel like he's wanting to baby somebody this morning. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. See that Zach, Zach uh, I, I want him to do that. I want Josh to do a song that's on my heart. I didn't come here to ask you for anything. I just come to visit with you. I just come to talk to you. There's a million things I can ask you for, but Lord, I just come to talk to you. I just come to... I tell you, he's been good to us. Thursday night, Omer and I have been battling that and mad. Well, Matt, yeah, Matt was with us Thursday night. We had been battling to fight that water. And we was wet and worn out and cold. And finally, I said, oh, my, I give up. I give up. I said, it's cold, wet, and tired. I said, let's just go and I have some give it to Jesus. Blessed be the day of the Lord. You know what? We get up Friday morning. That over day. He took care of it. Things wasn't a bit worse. He took care of it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I say hallelujah, church. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. God's a good God. Say good, buddy.
service this morning to come to Sunday school. I think Brielle had to. What part of Ohio do you live in, Brielle? Oh, oh! You studied Mama and Papa. Oh, I thought you got up in Ohio and drove all the way here. I thought you'd come to see me. I didn't think you'd come to see Mama and Papa. Okay, y'all go sit down. We're glad you're here, Brielle. Give him another hand. Sister Rosie uh, in prayer. Sister Debbie Kirk's having back problems. Timmy and Barbara Banks. And David Lovejoy's in the hospital. And Charles Smith from Georgia's having problems. We remember him. And uh, Brother Gail and Sister uh, Gail Dangerfield, we need to pray for them. And there was somebody uh, I was thinking about on the way to church, and it's done slipped my mind. Y'all forgive me that I don't remember everybody. Maybe it'll come to me before uh, we dismiss the service. But need to pray for, continue to pray for my mother, continue to pray for Sister Mabel, continue to pray for Sister uh, Francis. So many. And Brother Jerry Holston, pray for him. And Marty's Papa, uh, keep praying for him. So many, so many that needs prayer. Uh, and we need to lift them up uh, that God would take care of them. Um, we got a thank you card from Sister Connie. It says, uh, sometimes simple things mean the most. Thank you for your kindness. And I thank you for the, thank the church for the card you sent to me. It was very thoughtful. Love and prayers. Maybe sometimes you get aggravated uh, signing that card, those cards that's passed around. But you would not believe the folks that tells me what a blessing those cards are when they said and they read all of those signatures on there, so please don't get annoyed by uh, somebody punching you and say, sign this. So uh, I know you don't, but in case somebody does, one of these days he'll be in the hospital and they'll say, oh my, Lord forgive me. All right, the sign-up sheet here. How long are we going to go with this, Toby? couple more weeks we're trying to get an idea on how many uh, how many we up to there James so far uh, 25 25 
<laughs> we got 25 so far that's interested in riding a bus uh, and going to the ARC, an ARC experience there in Kentucky. We got to get a head count, uh, an idea how many's going so we can uh, see what size bus we're going to get or how long the trailer we want to use to load everybody on the pole. Are you shaking your head for Andrew? It'll work. We got enough t uh, bungee cords to tie everybody down. Uh, Lord have mercy, enough hay. So uh, then we'll come up with a date and we'll try to make it, get a date that'll make everything work. Now, coming to this coming Sunday, the 21st, uh, will be our first time. Uh, we decided here a month ago that we were going to try something new here at the church. The third Sunday of each month, we're, we're trying something new called Fellowship Sunday. On the third Sunday of each month, third Sunday night of each month, there will not be a p.m. service, Sunday night service. That is giving you an opportunity to visit, to support the church of your choice, to go out and fellowship. Uh, and so on the third Sunday night of each month, we will not be having church here at Rumble Community Baptist Church. So that starts next Sunday night. But next Sunday, immediately following the uh, morning service, we're going down to Ashford Church of God, behind Ashford Church of God, to the beautiful banks of the Big Cold River. We're having a baptizing. Uh, Brother Timmy Kirk, Brother Sammy Kirk, Brother Matt, uh, several more want to be baptized in the river. That's fine. We got a baptistry back here. If you want to be baptized, uh, just let me know. I've been baptized twice. I was baptized when I was young. Uh, we were having a baptizing down there one Sunday afternoon. I was dressed like I am now. And, uh, buddy, the Lord spoke to me. Guess what? I took my tie, my jacket, my shoes, and uh, stuff out of my pocket. I got baptized again. So if you feel like if you've never been baptized, you need to get baptized. If you've repented, if you haven't repented, I'd stay dry if I was you. I'd repent first. Uh, because if you haven't repented, it won't do you any good. You're just going to get wet. And uh, so, uh, but you need to repent first and then be baptized. But I'm telling you what, and, and if, if you've been baptized before and you say, Preacher, I just ain't satisfied. I want to get baptized again. Well, that's between you and God. That's none of my business. So just let me know. Next Sunday, probably about 1230, down behind the Ashford Church of God. Got a nice place. Got nice steps going down the river bank. And good place to park. So next Sunday. Any more announcements? Sunday after that. Right. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. I met with Brother David Lucas here Friday evening. And he done some measuring. Uh, like I said, him and his church, they don't take it lightly. They give it all 100%, 110%. They'll be here on the 28th, 6 o'clock, to put on the story of Peter. And you do not want to miss it. It's no, uh, I'm telling you what they do, a professional job. That's Sunday night the 28th. So 
All right. Anything else? I got certificates out in the car. Everybody does. Bob has right. got doctor. Uh, After church. Bob's got doctor certificates for those that set in on the first day of classes Wednesday night. You've got a certificate. How's that sound, Dr. Javins? <laughs> <laughs> What's your office hours now, Betty? Stand if you would. <laughs> Lord, we come before you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the service thus far. We thank you, Lord, for your presence being here. I ask the Lord as we go into a very important part of our week, as I say, Sunday after Sunday probably the mo one of the most important parts of our week. Our Sunday school teachers have studied, they've prepared, they've worked hard, Lord, to feed us, to bless us, Lord, to instruct us, Lord, in your word. I pray that you would help us, Lord, not to take it lightly, that we would support them, Lord, with our undivided attention, with our prayerful support. God, that we would show them, Lord, our appreciation for the time that they've spent, Lord, to instruct us in your word. I pray that you would help us, Lord, that we would take this word, lodge it into our hearts, Lord, that we would grow thereby. I pray, Father, that you would, Lord, just touch all the requests, Lord. Meet every need as only you can. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Good morning again, Robert. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You got your Bible, you can turn to the Gospel of John, first chapter. The lesson today comes from verses 19 through 34. <coughs> today we're going to be introduced to a man by the name of John the Baptist. Before I get started, I think something Lord just laid something on my heart. Maybe help somebody. Been praying for something for a long time. Been praying and praying. Before we, I'll tell you a little bit background about this man, John the Baptist. His daddy's name was Zacharias, and his mother's name was Elizabeth. And if you go back in the book of Zacharias, or go back, you can go back to the first chapter of Luke. The Bible says that Zacharias and Elizabeth was well stricken with the years. Mm -hmm. Is that right, preacher? It was old. They was old people. They was well stricken in years. And it was the day that Zacharias did his duties as a priest hung in the temple, while the incense was burning and while everybody was praying, the angel of the Lord appeared on the right side of the altar. And he, Zacharias was afraid. And he said, Zacharias, the Lord has heard thy prayer. Thank you. Now I want you to think about that for a minute. Was Zacharias old man and his wife an old lad, woman? Was he still praying to have a child? What do you think? I doubt it. 
He prayed that prayer. I would say he forgot that he even prayed that prayer. I'm sure when him and his wife Elizabeth was young, they first got married and they was young and they was wanting to have a child, I'm sure they prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they poured their heart out to God. Ronnie, but as time went by, as the years went forward, as the years come on, as they got well stricken in age, I say they quit playing that prayer. He probably thought, Lord, uh, uh, Lord's probably going to touch uh, uh, my wife's arthritis. I say they quit playing that prayer. They forgot about that prayer. But it wasn't time. <laughs> the Lord has heard thy prayer. Thy wife is going to have a child. My Lord, what are you talking Lord, about? I haven't prayed that prayer in 40 years. I haven't prayed that prayer forever. It wasn't time, Zachariah. Think about it. If Elizabeth and Zacharias would have had John the Baptist when they prayed the prayer, and he's in her young age, well, John would have been out in the wilderness for years and years and years of preaching and waiting for the Christ to come. It's God's timing. It's perfect timing. That is when I let in. You might be praying for something. You prayed for something. Maybe you've given up. God hasn't forgot that prayer. All right, well... Our lesson today, like I said, comes from verse 19 through 34. And I really like, I'm really intrigued, I must say, how John introduces John the Baptist. All the other Gospels start out, they tell us he was wearing camel hide and leather dirt. He was eating what he was eating. He was eating Locusts and wild honey, they was giving us this vivid description of this wild man. John doesn't do that. John wants us to know one thing. John says he wants us to know John the Baptist's testimony. And at the end of the day, folks, that's all that matters. All that matters is your testimony. It don't matter who you was. It don't matter how rich you was. It don't matter how poor you was. It don't matter what you dressed like. It don't matter what your favorite food was. What matters at the end of the day, at the end of your life, is your testimony. If you want this man right here to preach your funeral, you don't want to, you want him to have an easy time preaching your funeral, leave a good testimony. Don't matter. That's all that matters. So John says, he don't start out, he don't tell about his raiment, he don't tell about his food, he don't tell nothing about it. He starts out and he said, and this is the record of John. This is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent the priests and the Levites to Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? John said, this is his testimony. <laughs> so when they said and said, Who art thou? He confessed. And he denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. John did what didn't put on no airs. He didn't want no questions about it. I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm not the Christ. I want to make that clear, first thing. And they asked him, What then? Are thou Elias? Are you Elijah? That I am not. Art thou the prophet? Art thou that prophet? And he answered no. Notice now, a lot of people get confused. Back in the other Gospels, they asked Jesus. They said, ain't Elijah supposed to come? And Jesus said, Elijah's already came. 
And they knew it was John the Baptist. Here we find, he said, I'm not alive. John the Baptist was not a righteous. John the Baptist was born of Elizabeth and Zacharias. But he came, if you'll look, read Luke, God told Zacharias that he'll go before in the spirit and the power <coughs> of Elijah. John the Baptist wasn't Elijah reincarnated. John the Baptist wasn't Elijah come back from the dead. John the Baptist was the son of Zacharias who had the same power and the same spirit as that great prophet Elijah. Notice the wording here. They didn't ask John if, if he was a prophet. Because John the Baptist was a mighty prophet. He said, are you that prophet? They're referring to the back in Deuteronomy when God had Moses say there'll be a prophet as unto Moses come and when he comes he will lead you as Moses did. John wasn't that prophet. Jesus was that prophet. Then they said unto him who art thou? that we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? Oh my. John said, I tell you who I am. I'm the voice. He said, I am the voice of one. I am the voice of one. Crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah I'm the one Isaiah's prophesied to you guys about. I'm the one, the forerunner to come. I'm the one, the voice. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. If you go back and read that prophecy, Isaiah said that when he come, every mountain would be lowered, every valley would be raised up, the crooked would be made straight, the rough places made smooth. What does that mean? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about what all that meant? When Christ came, he came humble, meek, lowly to the common man. It's not hard to get to Jesus. He took all the Come on. obstacles, all the mountains, all the deep valleys, all the crooked roads, all the rough places in the road. They made it all the obstacles removed yeah. mm -hmm. so you could get to Jesus. Yeah. That's what we our job is today. Our job of the day is the same as John the Baptist. Prepare people to meet Jesus. Take the obstacles out of the way. Take all the rough places. He said he prepared the way. He was clearing the road for Jesus. He was getting like you went through this flood. All the trees, all the debris, all the stuff in the road, it had to be cleared out. Or Bob, you would have never got through. Amen. We got to clear out the road sometimes. We got to make a way, clean it up. We got to get people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. It's not about Richard. Not about anybody in this building. It's all about Jesus. I can't help you this morning. I cannot save your soul. But I can help lead you to Christ. I can help get some of your obstacles out of the way. I can help clean the road mm -hmm. to get you to Jesus. <laughs> and that's where what we gotta do. And they ask him, <coughs> he's still under interrogation. And they ask him, saith unto him, Why baptize thou then mm -hmm. if
If thou not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor neither that prophet. What gives you the authority? As the religious leaders, as the Pharisees and the scribes and all the leaders of the church of that day, you can see that they thought it took some kind of authority right. to baptize somebody. Yes. Baptism wasn't new for them. When someone converted to Judaism, they would baptize them for a symbol of purification. But they thought there had to be some kind of authority to do that. What gives you the right to do that? God answered and said, I baptize thee with water. But there's one standing among you who ye not know. This morning, you don't know Jesus Christ. There's one standing here among us this morning that you don't know. He it is who cometh after me is preferred before me, whose shoe latch I'm not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethabara beyond Jordan, and John was baptized. A lot of scholars say Jordan is east of Jerusalem, 20 some miles. A normal day high trek for in that day was right at 20 miles. So they're going further than a normal day. But he's still drawing a crowd that far away. But some scholars say the point where John was doing that is the same part, is the same point that the children of Israel when Joshua led them across the Jordan into the promised land. And it may be. That's what the promised land was all about. The next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. Notice John said, Behold, here's the Christ. Here is the Messiah. Here is the one. He said, Behold the Lamb. It's no incident that Jesus was crucified during Passover. It was the Lamb. He was the one without spot, without blemish, the ultimate supreme sacrifice deity that took away the sins, not just many, not just grumble, not just what of the world. Behold the Lamb. John said, This is he whom I said, after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for he was before me and we know Jesus was before the foundations of the earth Jesus is the one who is and was and is to come now listen to what John said John said I knew him not John didn't know him you might know of him this morning but unless you've got him in your heart you don't know him. John said, I knew him not, but he, but that he should be made manifested to Israel. Therefore I came baptized with water. So he could be revealed to Israel is the reason I came. I'm here to introduce Israel. I'm in here, my job was to introduce the world, to testify this to the world, to testify this morning that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from the heaven like a dove, and it abode on John says again, I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize.
baptized with water, the same said unto me. God had sent John to baptize with water, prepare people's heart, prepare people to meet the Lord. And John said, I didn't know him, but here's what God told me. The one that sent me told me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him same as he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. God said, John, when you see the one, the Spirit come down like a dove, rest upon him, and not depart, stay on him. That is my son. So that's how John identified him. That's how John knew 100%, without a doubt. Because God had done John. So John saw and finishing up, he said, and I saw, and I bear record, I saw it with my own eyes, and I testify today that this is the Son of God. That was John the Baptist's testimony. Amen. I seen it, Bob, with my own eyes. I testify, I'm telling you, this is the Son of God. We all got a testimony this morning. Every single one of us, Richard, has a testimony. Almost 21 years ago, to December, on a Sunday morning, I was sitting back here where Alicia's sitting. God has done been dealing with my heart. Long time. He told me, and I turned it down. Down there in that hospital. He talked to me, Josh, and I turned him away. I went as even as far as say, Lord, I do. I'm not, I'm not a Bible scholar, but I was raised up. My daddy was a pastor of this church. I knew the word. I knew thought I knew a lot of the word. I said, God, if you'll show me do this, I'll do it. God, if you really want me to serve you, show me this, and I'll do it. He did, and you did. He did. I did. But today, that Sunday morning, I couldn't go no further, couldn't I? I couldn't take another step. It was either now or never. I knew that God was speaking to me. I knew that God was asking me to let him in. I knew that they, I wasn't right. The things wasn't right between me and the Lord. That song that Chuck Compton come, song come as vivid as it ever was. How many times? How many times, Ronnie, am I going to prove how much I love you? How much I, love you? I came down to this altar that Sunday morning, and I said, God. I'm asking you to come into my heart. I'm asking you to come into my life and be my Savior. I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive me all my sins and where I've failed. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to serve you. I don't know how it's going to work. But this thing, I, one thing I do know, I need you. Yeah. I've seen it. I'm here. I bear record this morning that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came into my heart. He lived in my heart. The Spirit of the Lord came down <coughs> and filled my heart, Josh, and he's never departed. And I'm thankful for that this morning. Amen. And that is my testimony. 
You don't know Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Right now. Right now, this is the day. Today is the day. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Bless your heart. <laughs> Wonderful, Ryan. Wonderful. Bless your heart. Praise you. Ain't no plainer, ain't no plainer than that. Ain't no plainer than that. John said, I'm not him. And I'm here to tell you about it. Yep. <clears throat> Ronnie, folks will walk all around it. Folks will walk all around it. They'll try every way to get in, but the right way. And there ain't but one way. Let me tell you how, how the And 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 y'all think y'all will laugh at this. Say for instance, and I was thinking about this. Ronnie was up here teaching, and uh, so I used that. Zach is my son. Most everybody in the building knows that. He married Ronnie's daughter. And Zach, going up there and talking to Ronnie and Cheryl about Whitney. Just didn't even compare, did it? You ain't getting what I'm saying. To, no, to meet her herself, yeah. You'd say, is she a nice girl? Of course, they're going to say, oh, yeah, she's our daughter. And and, and is she a good girl? Of course they're going to say, yes, yeah, she's a good girl. She's our daughter. And so he just goes up there at their house and hangs out every day. Come on. Ronnie, that's what people was doing. Right. John. He comes to say, hey, I'm telling you, you can have a relationship with this person. Yeah. You can have a relationship with this person. Zach, do you understand what I'm saying? There's people that's coming to churches, that's going to churches for years and years and years. Ronnie. Listen to preachers talk about how good God is. Mm -hmm. Ronnie, Zach could come up there and sit in your living room every day and hear you and Cheryl talking about how good a girl that Whitney was and how fun she was, you know, to be around and all like that. Still didn't know. Still didn't know. And would have never done it. Till yeah. he asked Whitney to go out on a date with him. Hey, Whitney, would you make my girlfriend? Listen to me. That's part of the courtship. Listen, that's the way Jesus Christ is, Ronnie. Yeah. Jesus Christ started wooing us. Yeah. Tony. He started wooing us. He started calling us. 
He started calling on us. Yeah. Then James, he asked us to be his. Amen. He asked us to be his. I keep when I got old. Long, long time ago. Y'all been married for what, 14 years in June? Sitting in the living room down there talking to Rod and Cheryl when I got old. Very fast, wasn't it? Very, very fast. Hallelujah, church. Y'all ain't get what I'm talking about. Someone in the building this morning, you ain't gonna be happy. You ain't gonna be happy. <laughs> I've been preaching almost 40 years. I don't know it all. Some people think they know it all. You know what happens when you know it all? I done figured this out. When you know it all, you get bored. When you know it all, you get bored. I've seen preachers think they know it all, they get bored with it, and they're boring to be around. I don't know it all. I'm still learning a lot, but I've learned a lot. I don't preach a scared religion. I'll tell you what. If I scared you into getting saved, the devil would scare you into turning you back on the God. The Lord loves you. He 
and get saved. Yeah. But I do believe we're in the last days. You said, preacher, I don't believe it. You can believe what you want to. I read this word of things that's going on right now. Wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places. People's educating me that knows more than I do. This global warming's causing all these storms. We're having them more often. We say, well, we had one, a tornado a week before that. Won't see one for a hundred years. We may see one this afternoon. We don't know what's going to happen. Let's get saved. Let's get ready to go. Amen. Somebody be on my live stream. Somebody in the building. Lord speaking. I can feel it, Dolly. I, I felt it since we opened this service. Would you please listen? I felt it in Riley's teaching this morning. I felt the call roll out. As John the Baptist said, I just come to tell you, there's one mightier than I. John said, I can just preach repentance to turn from your wicked ways. This one coming after me, he'll baptize you with the Spirit, something that'll keep you. Would you come? Every head bowed, every eye closed, to Christians praying. Please, 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 I beg you from the depths of my heart. If you've been coming here any time at all, you know we won't embarrass you. But if you're not sure about your salvation, come on, please slip out of your seat. Make your way down this altar. If you're not sure about your salvation, you don't feel like you've come to this altar, Every hand's already bowed and every eye's closed. Would you slip your hand up? Or would you say, Brother Richard, would you pray with me where I'm at right now? Don't call my name out, but would you pray with me? Slip your hand up right now. Say, Richard, pray with me. Pray with me. Come on, slip it up. Slip it up. Slip your hand up. Pray with me, Brother Richard. Zach, hold on. I, I feel like somebody wants me to pray. Or Jesus, keep playing, Zach. Keep playing. I, I didn't mean for you to stop playing. But before you say, Lord, you know I'm not happy. I know I'm not happy. I know I'm not right. But Lord, I know what's wrong, and you know what's wrong. I'm not right with you. And Lord, you know it's my fault. I failed. I've done wrong. But Lord, all I can say is, I'm sorry. And Lord, I, I ask you to forgive me. I want peace, Lord. I want peace. I want to leave this church this morning. No, but I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I want peace. I want forgiveness, Lord. I want to know I'm saved. Please come into my heart. The only way I know how to, what to do is, Lord, is to say, I'm sorry. That's all I can do. I'm sorry. I wish I'd never seen the day in my life, but I have, and I'm sorry. So here I am, Lord. I know enough about your word. 
I know your word said if we'll repent, you said you'd forgive us. So I'm taking, taking you at your word. Hallelujah. I'm accepting forgiveness. I'm accepting it, Lord. And I'm expecting you to, to, to accept me. So I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to claim salvation as being mine. Hallelujah, Lord, I love you. I love you, Lord, I love you, I love you, I love you. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for speaking to my heart this day. In Jesus' name I'm saved. Amen. Every head still bowed. Every eye still closed. So if you're having a good time, I say, Brother Richard, I've been forgiven today. I've been forgiven. I ask the Lord into my heart. Come on. Come on, don't walk out of here defeated. I know the Lord spoke to somebody. Lift your hand up. Don't be ashamed. Live streamers, report in victory. Go ahead, Zach. Have you a heart as we
ain't got a big old fancy building. Ain't got, uh, you know, big old fancy name. Ain't got a very uh, smart preacher. If we got the presence of the Lord here, man, thank God for that. Did you enjoy Brother Robin's teaching? Yeah. Yeah. We are blessed beyond measure with our, our teachers, and I thank God for that. Uh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Something I, uh, I thought of what I, I was going to announce. I got a call this morning. Nancy, you'll, Bill Weimer passed away yesterday. Did you know that? Uh, he played the drums in many gospel groups. I think he started out with the songs from the minister. He, wasn't his wife Wasn't she related to the the songs from Amanda guys? Alicia, I think Sandy. Yeah. So pray for Bill's family. All right. All hearts and minds clear. Everyone's mind of the Lord. Pray for those uh, uh, that's under the weather. We've got a lot sick. Still got a good crowd this morning. Glad that Rihanna's back with us this morning. She she said the big C. <laughs> uh, we're, we're glad we're glad she's back. Glad she's doing better. And uh, all right, anything else that I leave out? Don't wait till you're going out the door and say you didn't announce. It. Brother Bob's got your medical certificates outside. Uh, uh, Eva has got a uh, brand new car out there. Uh, for what are we charging, Ronnie? For ten dollars? No, for a ride. Ten bucks to look at. Me and Ronnie. This is for me and Ronnie's doing. A uh, ride to the top of the hill back is $20. Yeah. Oh, Tony, Tony, you're dead. We did talk about that. Stand with you before I get upset. <laughs> Brother Tony. <laughs> Dismiss us, brother. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this church. We thank you for this service, Lord. We thank you for what we've heard and seen and felt here today. I ask you to go with us, protect it out, and spread it around, Lord, to some lost soul. Lord, be with us through the day and bring us back to the next point in time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.